This is big breaking emergency news. We are now seeing these riots and this chaos expand to new cities. We are now seeing, quote, migrants get upset. They are now storming City Hall in another city. This happened yesterday in Seattle. Now it's spreading. Friday, this just happened a few hours ago. Migrants and their advocates, these NGOs and these groups that are being paid to help facilitate and fund this because a lot of people are making money from this. There's a lot of money going around right now. They are leading the way and bringing them to the city hall in New York City. This is happening right now. We have migrants being disruptive and going to city hall demanding housing. This is happening in New York City right now. They are also demanding that the New York City mayor halt any type of stay limits on migrants that are staying in hotels or any of these shelters. Most of them, they are just staying in hotels and they have a 30 or 60 day stay limit until they have to leave. They are now demanding that they do not have to leave and they can stay here in these hotels, right? And in Seattle yesterday, they were demanding that the hotels are not even good enough and they need adequate housing. They're saying the hotels are not adequate. They need even better housing. So this is spreading. This is coming to all these major sanctuary cities. They are being overwhelmed. They have allowed this chaos. They have put a giant billboard sign on their city saying they're open for this chaos. And now we're seeing the repercussions of it. And we are seeing people demand housing in New York City now. Today, there were massive protests at the New York City Council, right? So I'm going to play you guys this clip here from this video. And this is being reported on local news in New York City, right? So these migrants are getting angry. They are getting agitated. They are getting upset because... Their resources are being cut off, right? They realize that they were told a lie to come here. And some people are getting resources, but it's limited. They're saying you have to leave after 30 days or 60 days. We do not have unlimited money. We can't even pay for our own homeless families and our own homeless veterans in our country right now. People that have been here the whole time. We can't even pay for them and support them. But we are supposed to support every single person on earth that comes to America. This is insane. And now we are seeing another riot break out. So I want you guys to listen to this video here. This was from local news in New York. Really quick, hit it up for me down there. All right, hit that like, hit that subscribe. I'm posting multiple videos a day for you guys, keeping you updated. Let's get into this clip here. This was posted by local New York news, right? CBS News, and they are saying that these migrants stormed city council today and they're demanding an end to the stay limits, essentially saying we are allowed to stay here as long as we want. They're trying to claim these shelters as permanent housing and they're going to claim these hotels and they want to stay in them permanently. This is insane and this is coming to other parts of America as well. They are asking Americans to house these people in their homes in these certain cities as well. Even the New York mayor has brought that up before. So I want you to listen to this news clip really quick. He was held in front of City Hall today in support of changes to the policy that limits shelter stays from migrants. The demonstration comes as City Council needs to address that topic. CBS 2's Jennifer Bisram live in the newsroom with the latest on this. Jennifer? Hi, Chris. City lawmakers are meeting right now looking to repeal a city policy limiting the length of stay in city shelters for newly arrived immigrants, calling the 30 and 60 day deadlines cruel, especially for children. What do we do? Immigration advocates, faith leaders, and city leaders gathered on the steps of City Hall Friday morning. In recent months, the Adams administration has forced asylum seekers to leave their shelter placements after 30 days for single adults and 60 days for families with children. And that ain't right. That ain't right. In support of legislation that would prohibit implementing caps on shelter stays for New Yorkers experiencing homelessness. That includes asylum seekers. A shelter system in New York City was created 
to stabilize people. Right. To help them on their exactly. journey. Exactly. That's not what they're doing. This rule does exactly the opposite. Exactly. It comes after dozens of migrant men were found living in hazardous conditions in Queens and the Bronx this week. The man housing the asylum seekers told CBS2 he was trying to help them because they had nowhere to go. We have folks that are living in, you know, a, a furniture store, 70 people, fire hazard, God forbid something happens there. We shouldn't wait until a tragedy occurs. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's being reported out of CBS News, New York. And you heard there at the end that there's so many people here that they are now making, people are making these makeshift little renter areas, renter shacks in their basements. There was this guy that put a bunch of bunk beds in his basement at his furniture store. And he was renting it out to a bunch of quote migrants to stay there all right and they were stacked in there there was like 75 people in this little tiny basement this is insane this is not even humanitarian for anybody this is not this is not going to work they know this is not going to work and this is overwhelming our system and overwhelming our country and also in new york city for some reason they are allowing these migrants quote migrants illegal immigrants to break the laws openly and get away with it all right the manhattan district attorney just dropped all charges against this guy his name is juan boda i believe that's how you pronounce it he's 22 he's the one that was flipping the bird at photographers following his involvement in a gang attack on a nypd officer so they just dropped all charges against this guy it was on video, this viral video. They were beating up police officers in the middle of New York City. You can't even make this up. They get arrested. Half of them flee to, a. I think they went to California because there's no bail release, right? They have no bail. They're just instantly released. And now they're dropping all the charges against these people that are that beat up the police officers. This is insane. You can't even make this up. This is what the Manhattan DA just did. Just dropped all charges. So why are the police even doing their jobs if they're allowed to get beaten by people that aren't even U.S. citizens? They just enter our country, go to these places, get free housing. So entitled, so ungrateful coming to our country and doing this and acting like this comes here gets free hotels free housing now they're saying they're not going to leave the hotel they're never going to leave they're going to stay here squat here take over they probably have squatter rights by now this is another major issue a lot of these squatters are taking over homes all over the country and a lot of them could be migrants these quote migrants all right, not saying they are, but there's a percentage of them that definitely are. And they are squatting in these hotels and these shelters and saying that they're not going to leave and that they have residency there. All right, so they're getting all these entitlements and then they get to beat up police officers on camera in the middle of Times Square. You can't even make this up. And then all charges are dropped against these people absolutely insane this is un-american and it's anti-american the policies that these certain places are putting into place there have also been all these fires and suspicious explosions inside of our country as well look at these massive fires that are taking over northern texas right now devastating and extremely tragic and these could have been started by people that are coming into our country this could have been started by foreign governments entering our country sending over spies sending over their military units their special operation units coming over in plain clothes crossing the border quote gotaways this could be happening right now it's a major possibility they could have came over here got set up set these fires and they have the technology now it doesn't even have to be anything from space or anything it could be a person standing 
a few miles away and use a high-powered laser that can ignite a fire from a mile or two away. They have these lasers that can ignite fires and somebody could be a mile or two away starting these fires, standing there holding something like this, right? And it leaves no trace of what they were doing and they weren't even near it. It's hard to pinpoint where it even came from, all right? This could be happening in our country, not saying it is, but the possibility is there when we have this wide open border and we have potentially military units coming over. They could be sabotaging our infrastructure. This is a major hit to our food supply, right? Think about it. There were potentially 175,000 cattle. I was adding up the numbers showing you guys yesterday in my video. Over 150,000 guaranteed that are in the middle of this fire, right in the middle of this Texas fire. This is a major hit to our food supply. And these ranchers might not ever come back. They might not ever be a part of our food supply chain again. They might just get sold out and bought by some company and bought maybe even by some company from China. Just come out and buy this land. This is happening. They're buying our farmland all over the country. This is happening and they're buying it near military bases. They are buying it and they are extracting all the water out of these farms and even in these desert areas like Arizona where the water is very scarce they are also extracting it and taking it out with things like alfalfa and hay right growing massive hay fields in the middle of the desert pumping out all the water and then shipping it overseas for their cattle production and for their business right so that's what's happening in our country and this could have been sabotage as well. And it could have been, and it could have easily happened with this open border, with this open border policy that we have right now. And now we have these people freaking out, demanding housing, demanding housing in all these major cities, right? Seattle, New York City, they, this is going to spread. It's already spreading these protests I'm telling you, they've activated these NGOs, these groups that are paying for this, that we pay for with our tax money. We give it to these groups for like humanitarian, quote, humanitarian aid. And then part of the things they do is organize these protests and hire these agitators to bring the migrants to city council and bring these other people that are a part of it, make signs, everything, right? They are getting in there and they are finding people that, yeah, they're mad. They're getting kicked out of their homes, kicked out of their hotels that they came here and got for free. And now they are finding these people and bringing them to the city council to be upset. In Seattle yesterday, they were rioting. They were banging on the windows. They had to call the police and handle these people in Seattle yesterday. Right? That's how crazy it was getting and now we're seeing this in New York City as well. So this is going to spread. If you live in a sanctuary city, a major sanctuary city, we could see this happen soon because they're all facing the same crisis. There's too many people, not enough housing, not enough funds, not enough resources, not enough food to pay, all, all this stuff. We are being stretched to our limit and overwhelmed as a country. And it's being allowed to happen. All right, so... Please hit it up for me down there. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. I'm posting multiple videos a day. Let me give you guys a little quick chick update here on some chicks. We've got a bunch of chicks. These chicks are a few days old now, but they're getting big fast. We have some other chicks that are over two weeks old that I've been showing you guys. They're getting really big. They have almost their full feathers. And we have some other chicks that are about a month and a half old. And then we have some that are a few years old. All right. So we got all different stages right now. And we are getting prepared. We are getting ready. We are building chicken coops. We are building our garden. We are getting ready in case there's any of these major attacks on our food supply chain. All right. So thank you guys so much. Please get prepared. Get ready. And I hope you have a big old 
blessed day.